Hello friends, if you want to make a gorgeous old-fashioned kite like this, follow along with me. We're going to make it step by step and trust me, you are going to want to watch this video because I have seen infinite amounts of videos where people do it incorrectly. So we're going to talk you through all the details, everything you need to know to make a gorgeous old-fashioned kite with fabric like this. All right, to get started, let's talk through all of our supplies that we need to make our own kite. So first of all, I have this large piece of fabric to make the sail. You can use any color styles that you like, but you definitely need something that's lightweight. The most common material that's used for kite making that you'll probably recognize is ribstop nylon. That's really gorgeous because it's so lightweight. It comes in a million different colors and it really picks up the wind. It doesn't have, you know, huge holes or anything like that's going to that's going to let a lot of wind pass through. So you see that commonly used with kite making. It's definitely more modern. It's not as traditional where we're doing something that feels very turn of the century, very vintage. So that's going to look a lot newer. The other thing that you'll notice about that ripstop nylon is that it comes in every color of the rainbow, but just single color. So you don't see patterns, you don't see anything like this that's gonna make for a super pretty kite. Next, you're gonna need some sticks that you're gonna use to make your frame. These have to be extremely thin and lightweight. I would recommend using an eighth of an inch, maybe half of an inch if you can. That might not work that well, but an eighth of an inch is really what you want. I'm using some that are a little bit thicker just so you can see it on camera, but I'm gonna link in the description what you actually need. Again, I just want you guys to be able to physically see it, see all the steps. Eighth of an inch, half an inch is really the way to go. Now these can be different lengths, so I'll give you some different lengths that will work in the video description as well. Now you're gonna need some kite string. You may see kite string like this. It's kind of more of like a children's piece of kite string. Now these are totally fine, but what's even better than that is a kite string that's on a spool. And that's because as your kite starts to pull away and catch into the wind, these can just free unwind, free load. Whereas these, you actually have to twist your hand around. The mechanics are just a little bit more challenging there. Now we also have ribbon to make our tail. We have some embroidery floss that we'll use to attach the frame together. I have some Elmer's glue that I'm going to use to attach the sail to the frame. Instead of Elmer's glue, you could use an iron and hem tape. That would be a really beautiful, a very professional looking kite once you're finished. So once you have all your supplies, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is put our frame together. Now again, these are just dowel rods. We wanna use an eighth of an inch or a half of an inch. I even carved mine just to fit these better together. That won't work if you're using eighth of an inch, but if you are using half of an inch, you could potentially carve these slightly just to piece them together. And what you wanna do is make a cross. You want this to be slightly higher. You don't want this cross beam to be in the center. You want it to be slightly higher and you want this to be nice and even. Now, once you have all of those items placed, you can just take your embroidery floss and do a little crisscross to attach these pieces together. Now I'm gonna flip it around so it's closer to me. Start by just making a simple square knot keep these pieces nice and tight and hold them in your hands so that this cross shape is going to stay intact. Now once you have your embroidery floss wound around, we're going to cut an extra length so that we can make a knot. And what I like to do is just try to pull one little piece out ever so slightly to make that knot. Now, if you have any issues, you can also add a little dab of glue and that's gonna be an easy way to hold this together. Once you have your frame 
made into that cross shape, then we're gonna want to take the embroidery floss and make the exterior frame right here, all the way around. So there's two different ways that you can do this. One is that you can actually take a knife and just carve this shape out right here. Or what you can do is first start by making your knot. Again, we're doing a square knot. You can start anywhere along the frame. And what you can do is just wind this around a few times, make sure it's right at the edge, and make sure this is very tight, and then go ahead and pull it down here. Now, as you pull this together, you might notice that this cross starts to pull in one direction or another, so it's up to you to hold it in place, make sure that it's nice and even, and then once you wind this new piece around, that's gonna reinforce the tie that you have in the center, making that cross. Now, just like before, cut an extra length of that embroidery floss, pull one little loop that's already attached to your frame and make a knot that way. Otherwise, again, you can add just a little tiny drop of glue and help it hold that way as well. Now, once you have your embroidery floss all the way around, you have your frame ready and we can add the sail. Now I'm gonna set my frame right on top of it and I'm going to get it near the edge just to minimize any waste of my fabric but I'm giving it just about a one inch border on each side. Now I'm gonna take a pen and I just wanna mark that border all the way around. And I'm just making a dotted line and this line doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it as close as you can to about an inch all the way around. Now once you have your dotted line, set your frame to the side and just cut this fabric out. Once you have your sail cut out, take the rest of your fabric and just set it off to the side. So we can just set our frame right on top of this, make sure all of your edges line up and that you have a little bit of a border going all the way around. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it just a nice little cut along each corner. Now this is gonna make each end of the frame stick out slightly but what it's also going to do is help us by when we're ready to attach the sail to the frame it's going to give us the geometry that's going to attach easier without having a lot of weird fabric pieces hanging out now there's a couple of different ways that you can attach the sail to the frame i mentioned this before now if you want it to look super professional make a tiny little edge one side at a time iron this down do that on all four sides then place your frame inside and then we'll make a second fold that goes over the embroidery floss hem tape goes in there we iron it again to attach the sail to the frame using that hem tape so you don't see any edges now you could do this with glue as well, but glue is a little bit easier to just make one fold. So you are gonna have raw edges. And so you definitely want those edges to at least look as clean as possible. Just make sure they're nice and pretty. Now, another thing that you're gonna wanna do if you're using Elmer's glue is you may want to trim this up just a little bit more once your frame is in there. And I would actually do this one side at a time. The reason that I'm trimming this up I want less fabric to fold over across the frame because I want this kite to be as lightweight as possible. Now, I recommend adding the glue on the inside. Now, we want this to be seamless, but we don't wanna to add too much glue because again, we want this to be as lightweight as possible. So I'm just adding a really small amount of glue, making a nice little line, working one side at a time. 
and I'm just folding that fabric over on top of the embroidery floss. If you notice that your fabric pops up like how mine is, just keep running your hands across it. You can always add a little bit of extra glue if you need it, but usually you just need to wait for that Elmer's glue to get a little bit drier, a little bit tackier, and then it'll hold. Now, once you have one side in place, just continue that process. Make sure that you are very mindful that each piece of fabric is lined up with the frame. Once you have a couple pieces of fabric in place, you're gonna to wanna to make sure as you fold these pieces over, make sure you really give it a nice, good tug. We want the sail to be completely flat. We don't want for the sail to have like a big gap as you pick it up for it to, so you can see like right now it's not attached right here, but like imagine that this whole piece was floppy like this. That's really bad for it picking up the wind. So just make sure you attach it in a way that it's gonna be nice and tight. Now you're gonna to wanna to let this part dry before you move on to making the bridle. Now, once you have everything properly attached, your sail and your frame are nice and held together, the next step is to make the bridle. Now, the reason that I make the bridle on this side is because as you fly the kite, you wanna be able to see the side. You don't necessarily wanna see the back side or the frame. So I would recommend making the bridle on this side. There's a million different ways to make bridles. It really depends on the way that you need to weight your kite. So depending on the shape, you'll see lots of different shapes, forms, lengths of different bridles. But for this, we just wanna do something really simple. So we're gonna attach the fabric to the frame here. We're gonna attach the fabric to the frame here, and we're gonna make a nice big loop where they're attached and then the kite string is going to attach there and it's gonna be able to kind of free float along that loop that we have. So you can use the kite string to do this or you can use embroidery floss. It's really whatever you choose. I'm gonna cut this kite string at an angle, moisten it, and then place it through an embroidery needle. Now I'm gonna make a really long length of it. And I'm gonna double up this kite string so that I can make a knot in the back. And again, we want this to be nice and long. We're gonna loop it around the frame several times. So I'm making this much longer than what it might seem is necessary, but I just wanna err on the side of caution. I just wanna make sure I have plenty of room to loop around the frame. All right, so once you have your embro embroidery floss or your kite string, halved both ends together we're going to make a balloon knot now i've got my knot right here and i'm just going to make a second balloon knot that i'm going to place on top of that first one now where should you place these two different pieces of the bridle now we just want it to be kind of near the top and near the bottom but it doesn't really have to be all the way so really kind of like about halfway in between the cross and the end is about what I'm gonna do on each side. This doesn't have to be perfect, we just wanna kinda get it close. We want the knot to be in the back, so make sure you start in the back. And just loop it around to the other side. So as I'm making these loops going around, I'm really mindful that I'm making them nice and tight. Now I'm gonna say we do one more, three total. Now 
because that loop is going to be on the front, I'm gonna push my needle through for a fourth time, go over to the other side and start my loops again. Now to make it as centered as possible, I'm actually gonna start my loops on the opposite side. So now I first I started my loops on this side over here, but now I'm starting my loops over here. And again, make this nice and tight. So what you're gonna wanna do is hold on to the bridle with one hand until you make your first full loop, and then you won't have to hold on to that anymore. finished I can just cut this kite string and embroidery needle away now what you're going to want to do is make that square knot and you're going to want to push that knot all the way down against the fabric and then you can just trim any excess edges if you like now flip this back over We've got our nice little bridle right here. Now all we have to do is take our extra kite string and attach it anywhere along this bridle because this knot is actually gonna be able to free slide back and forth. So it really doesn't matter where you tie it. Tie a little square knot, there we go. And now we've got the basic kite right here. There's only one thing left, and this is actually the fun part. What we can do next is we can make the tail of the kite. Now the tail of the kite, we also want this to be extremely lightweight, so you can use any kind of ribbon that you think is pretty. I've got my ribbon right here. Now you can attach this with glue, or you can attach it by tying it around the bottom part of the frame, and then the thing that's so important about this tail, the reason that we need the tail, is that this is gonna help weight the kite. Now, the way that the kite actually flies, it's so cool, it's a lot like an airplane. So it's actually flying because of the relationship between the push and pull of the air along this kite. So a certain amount of force is pushing it up, a certain amount is pushing it down, and it just kind of hovers in the air, and it's so much fun. But what this tail is gonna do is gonna continue to help it angle, so rather than it moving you know, in a lots of different directions, the spacing of the bridle and the position of the tail are gonna help keep the kite position at an angle about like this so that it can continue to hover instead of it flippy flopping and doing crazy things in the wind. Now your tail length might vary based on how you need to weight it, but for this, it should be easy peasy. You know, any length should be okay. You can even attach little bows. I'll show you in another video that you can watch right here, how you can make these bows. So once you have your tail right here, we have our kite string. You are completely finished. You have now made an old fashioned kite. It's time to go fly it. Now, if you love this DIY, make sure you like and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. My name is Brittany Bly. I'm the founder of Pop Shop America and we do a ton of fun DIYs. So hopefully we'll see you again. Happy crafting.